Hey y'all, it's Courtney. Um, I'm just gonna get straight to this today. Uh, usually I would talk a little bit, you know, update you guys or whatever in the beginning. Uh, but we're not gonna do that today. The only thing I'm gonna say is, um, I recorded the second part of my forgiveness video. I didn't like the way it turned out. Um, I think some things could have been misconstrued in it, so I'm gonna refilm that later. And also, um, I'm gonna do my husband's rock bottom story. Um, I'm gonna let him tell it and then upload it. Um, would you guys be interested in listening to the day that he went to prison, basically? Um, it's a really crazy story. Um, well, I mean, I guess stories, no, I guess stories don't have to be fake, but anyways, um, so those are the two videos coming up. Uh, do you guys want to hear both those or not? Let me know in the comments. Um, my comment section's back on. Hopefully it's on for this one. Fingers crossed. Um, but anyways, today I have something very important to talk about. Um, as parents, our job is to protect our kids from anything and everything that we possibly can. Now, accidents happen. Our backs can be turned and somebody could kidnap our child. Those kind of things can't be controlled. You can't control that. I mean, if you know something's going on and you allow it, then you're a terrible person. But there's no way that you can control everything in the world, and I'm aware of that. But... The first thing, the second thing is really the more irritating thing. Um, oh, and let me preface this as well. Um, with my second story, let me just say this first and foremost. I am not part of the furry community. I'm not part of the art community or anything like that. Um, the only reason why I heard about that story was because I do watch a couple artists, but I'll talk about it here in a minute. I'm just not part of the furry community, so I'm not like... I don't know every detail of this story, but I do know enough that I mom raged over it and you need to hear this story so that you can show those type of videos to your kids so you can show them that this shit does happen. It happens and it can happen to anybody, you know? So anyways, so the first um, thing I want to talk about is a police records document was leaked. Um, I don't know how, when, why, where, whatever, but I do know that it was over, uh, Onision's daughter fell out of a two-story window. Two stories. Fell onto pavement. And the only reason that Onision found her was because she allegedly had to crawl across the pavement and knock on the door because her dad was out in the garage on his computer, like always, you know, and supposedly Kai was cooking dinner. If I'm cooking dinner, you know where my kids are at? In the living room, not 20 feet from me so that I can keep an eye on them. But this poor baby, had to crawl and drag herself across the pavement and knock on the garage door. And Greg says, or James says, um, that it, he heard like a deep voice and knocks on the thing, on the garage door. So he jumped up and went outside. He took his phone with him. Just wait a second on that. Um, so Kai says, oh, I was cooking dinner. Like I said, so many things ran through my head when I heard this story. First off, if you're making dinner, why is a two-year-old, she was two years old, why is a two-year-old all the way upstairs in her bedroom? Why? She said that her son was watching something in the living room, so she put the other kid upstairs so that she could watch what she wanted to on her TV. Give her a tablet. Give her a phone. If you really want to let her watch something that she wants to watch, put Netflix on a tablet and give it to her while you're in the kitchen. And there is no way I would cook a whole dinner and not check on my child. Especially if she was all the way upstairs. 
I mean, she could be up there in the bathroom drinking bleach. She could be up there in your bedroom getting into your, uh, you know, naughty parent drawers. You, you just never know. Um, second off, if you are going to put the, a child in their room, they have like six surveillance cameras in and around their yard to see people outside. Because Onision is freaking paranoid. Just a second. Onision's so freaking paranoid. But you're going to put your daughter up in her bedroom by herself all the way on a different level of the house. Why couldn't you put a camera in that room? Why would you not have a, 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 a some sort of, you know, security camera, nanny cam, anything up there to keep an eye on her while you're cooking dinner? That makes no sense to me that y'all had that many cameras. You couldn't take one of those cameras out of the yard and put it up in the room so that you know your baby's safe? The negligence is real. Um... And then, the, the, the icing on the cake, when Onision ran outside and screamed for Kai to call 911, do you think he went and, well, not picked his daughter up? This is the one thing I understand. People have said, well, why would you not scoop your baby up and run her straight to the hospital and hold her tight until they got there? I wouldn't do that either. I would not pick my child up. When anybody gets in a car wreck or anything, they tell you, do not move this person. Because you don't know what's broken. You could damage them further if you move them. Um, my mom was a nurse, so, I mean, I just, I, I kind of know these kind of things. I don't think that's why they didn't move her. I think Greg made, or James made sure that she wasn't moved so he could prove that he didn't do it. He is so paranoid. He literally, instead of going and at least talking to his child and saying comforting words to his child, he filmed it. He pulled his camera out of his pocket and filmed his daughter lying on the pavement. Didn't say a word. Didn't say a caring, concerned dad word to her. The CPS worker found it very odd. His answer when they asked why he filmed it um he said that he filmed it because a friend had threatened suicide uh and they were gonna blame him so he filmed his daughter after she fell out of the window oh and he wanted to film from where she fell out of the window and then the pavement and everything because he wanted to show the doctor exactly how far she fell and blah 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 blah, blah. dude is nuts that is so crazy. As, as a parent, our job, our biggest job in our lifetime is to protect our babies. And if you're incapable of loving and caring about your children, give them to somebody who will. If all you care about is yourself, let somebody else love them. And I'm not saying he doesn't love his kids, but it just seems so strange, his reaction. Instead of, like, being a caring, concerned father, it's like, oh, pull out the camera. And instead of being at the hospital and worried about his daughter, well, he was at the hospital, I'm sure. But he, my kitty ears, keeps flopping over. I'm like one of those cats that has the folded ear. Um, but he made sure to let his patrons know that there was no Patreon chat tonight. Why are you even worried about Patreon? His daughter had a piece of her skull busted in. And it was pushing on her brain. She had multiple hematomas. Hematoma. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, bleeding on her brain. Her skull was pushed into her brain. And pushing on it. I mean, this dude. They are just. Unfit and neglectful. And I understand that accidents do happen, but this could have really been prevented. There, I feel bad for the little girl, and I do, like I said, I understand accidents happen, but this would have so easily been prevented. 
or another accident could have happened. That child was upstairs alone. There's no way that if she was into something, Kyle would have known about it. So that's her bad. And it's Greg's or Jane's fault too because he could help her out. Okay, so second topic. Um, so there is this creeper named Nora the Wolf. Okay, they have this uh, Instagram page. And what they did was they infiltrated the young kid part of the furry community. Um, the furry community has almost come become like um, an alternative scene. And there's a lot of kids in there. Um, you know, from like 12 up. Um, and I tell my daughter about these kind of stories all the time. Because she's 11 and she loves attention you know we got her we got our playstation or her um xbox a headset for christmas and because she had girl in the title of her gamer tag we had to make her change her tag because it was like little boys constantly constantly and who who knows if they are little boys that's the scary part wanting to voice chat with her and inviting her to games so we paid ten dollars and we we're like take girl out of that you make it something that is unisex that doesn't hint at you being a girl don't make pink fluffy pink fluffy kittens or anything like that that makes it known that you're a girl because I don't care if she has friends on there but come on come on now if you accept all those requests there's got to be at least one 40 year old dude sitting in his mom's basement you know what I mean because it was just like bam 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 like it was ridiculous so anyways so we gotta really tell our kids about this stuff um this guy infiltrated this um community made friends with all these girls said he was a 14 year old girl named Nora befriended all these people um but this is the kind of things he was sending to these girls and this is what terrifies me about my daughter being online because this is this is normal for these kids the way this person talked he messaged this person like three or four times and then was like do you want to play a question game and I was like, what do you mean? He was like, I'm going to ask you questions and you tell me the answers and then you got to ask me questions. You want to know what this motherfucker's questions were? What is your full name? Do you have a passport? Am I still recording? Oh, good. I was worried there for a second. Um, do you have a passport? What school do you go to? What state do you live in? Have you ever masturbated? Ha ha ha. How many siblings do you have? Are your parents strict or protective? This dude's a fucking creep. Um, what is your stance on polygamy? What is your sexuality? Have you ever had sex before? Do you like sex? Just... <clears throat> like... <sighs> I know this is not normally how I act, like, so erratic, or wh however you want to explain it, like, jumpy... But these are the types of cases that really get to me. Okay, this man went in and befriended all these little girls. 12 to 16, I believe. Well, some of them were overage. But most of them were from about 12 to 16. Most of them being 12 to 14. So he likes them young. And what he would do is befriend these girls. Um... And learn all, everything about them. Get to know everything about them. Their deepest, darkest secrets. And then he would blackmail them with whatever he knew that the rest of the community, whatever that person wouldn't re want the rest of the community to know. Oh, another one he would ask them all, have you been raped before? And, like, continue to push the person for details of their sexual abuse. Why? If anybody ever asks about that kind of thing and pushes you to tell details, there's never a pure intention with that, I would say. Unless it's a counselor or a therapist or something like that. Of course, they're going to want you to talk about it. But if it's some random person online, there's no good intention in that, I promise. These kids, 
they don't have the reasoning skills. So they think us parents are just doing the whole um, urban legend to scare your kids into listening and doing what you tell them. This is not one of those situations. Um, every time I hear a story like this, I tell my daughter to go look up the video. Uh, creep show Art. I love her. And that's actually how I heard of this story. I watch her every video because she's a really great artist. And she has, like, story times or what's big in the news right now or whatever. Um, she'll draw and then talk about the subject as she draws. And I just, I love her. Um, she did a really good RSN video. Like, an in-depth good RSN video. Um, so, yeah, her name is Creep Show Art. Um... I guess I could put that, I'll put that in the pinned comment so you guys can go see her video because obviously there's going to be a little bit more details because I didn't write everything down. Uh, when I learned of this, I watched a couple videos to gain, you know, a few different opinions, a few different, you know, whatever, and then I wanted to get on here and talk about it because this makes me fucking sick. This man is 24 years old, 24 to 26 years old. 24 to 26. And he blackmails these little girls by telling them he's going to tell everybody that they were raped and this, this, and this happened. Good thing I'm not monetized, huh? Um, that he is going to do whatever that he knows will embarrass them or whatever, get them to do what he wants to gain control over these kids. And then, once they're scared, he says, send nudes now. Yeah, he's receiving child pornography on the daily because he has that many victims. They know of 11 already, 11, and he has only been on the scene for, you know, a couple months, and there's already 11 little girls that have come out. I mean, this is the scariest shit as a parent. This is a nightmare for a parent. Or any parent that cares, you know? That's what's so scary to me is, you know, when my child is not with me, I can't control what the other parts of her family let her do. I can tell them she's not allowed to have phones or tablets or anything like that, but she knows that if she, she annoys them long enough, they're the type to give in because they don't want to fucking hear it. They just want to be left alone. So, here, take it and go. Three times now, we've, we've caught that happening. And three times. It's just... Scary. And... This has happened before. He's a copycat of a guy named Cristali. That did this same exact thing. I think like two years ago, and he's in prison, or he was in prison, I think he might be on house arrest now, so I don't know what this guy thinks, but the law will eventually catch up with him, even if it takes a little while, they'll find him, um, he distributes these nudes that these little girls send him, he goes and sends them to all, the, all of his other, you know, little predator friends, and he also um, blackmails these little girls into have to, having to make art for him. Furries effing art. He'll con them or bribe them or whatever to make, I've already said it a million times, rape drawings, basically. Um, pictures of very horrible scenes that even though it's an animal or a you know a mascot looking animal it doesn't matter it's still very disturbing and he uses the other little girls in that community's avatars or their costume or whatever you want to call it um their suit whatever uh he will use their suit for the person that's being assaulted in the photos. He, the way that he talks to these people, oh god, it's just, please look up 
other people's videos. Um, all you have to do is look up Nora the Wolf and it'll take you to all these videos. It is fucking disturbing. Um, when I get upset like this and I get going, I can't, like, I have a list of things, I points I wanted to make. But it all is my mind as soon as I get on video and start getting, like, upset the more I'm talking about it. So, there's that. Am I still going? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, I'm glad that I got all that out. Um... If you want more information, go look up both of these. Um, who did the first video? Steve, Stevie Wolf, I think, made the first video. And then, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember some good... Repzilla. Repzilla made a video. Um, so if you want to see more about that, I'll put, so, I'll put some links in my pinned comment if you guys want to check these situations out. They, they're they just both, I heard both of those stories really close together, and it just made me like, our biggest jobs in life, I've said this like three times in this video, but I cannot say it enough, our most important job in our life that we will ever have is making sure that our little ones are safe, and nobody's hurting them, and they're not hurting themselves, and to help them grow up to be the best person that they